Yep. It's time for new brake pads. Alright, so it's just that time again wherein I've used up all that I could from these uh, pads and it's just time to replace them, I guess. Alright, so some of the tools that you'll need are, of course, the new brake pads, a rotor disc aligning tool, a couple of wrench, hex wrenches, in my case it's a 5 and a 3 mil, a pick of some sort to help you out in removing the old pads, an 8 mil wrench, needle nose pliers, disc brake spreaders, Flat no, a flathead screwdriver, a couple of cotton swabs, gloves, silicon oil, and of course new brake fluids. I'm going to be flushing the old fluid at the same time. Alcohol and some paper towel. Alright, so first step, remove your wheels. First up, there's going to be some sort of clip here in the pin. It's just an extra security, just in case your pin comes loose on you. So using a needle nose pliers, just try to pry that off like that. Now using a 3mm hex, remove the pin from this side. Alright, so once you've got the pin removed, you can just pull out the old brake pads from the top like this. And inspect. Alright. These are the old brake pads. Right there. So ideally, should have at least about one one millimeter or more left in them before you replace them. So in this case, on one side, it's got about 0.34 mil, but on the other, this one, on the other side, it's completely gone through. reason that could have happened is it's a four piston caliper and one of the pistons is further out than the other making it twist or making the brake one of the pad twist like this so when it breaks it's breaking at an angle using up only one side of the pad and leaving one side Thicker. There. All right, so these are the new pads. It's a uh, Hope standard brake pads. I chose the standard one over the uh, the the gold one. I don't know, it's a metallic one, because uh, my experience, the last uh, metallic pad that I used was squeaking on me. It was noisier than this one so I prefer this one over the other one but they say the metallic one lasts a lot longer than this one but it doesn't matter it's really annoying so I just chose this one over that so the kit comes complete with new new bolt spring and the pads itself so it comes with a pair of new brake pads the new spring, the bolt, the new lock pin, and right there is the new lock safety clip. Alright, so comparing the uh, old and the new one. So it's got pretty much a lot more, of course it's brand new, a lot more material on them as opposed to the one that I've already used up. So it 
comes at a thickness of around 2.4 mils, millimeters in stock. Over the other one that's got less than half a millimeter left on him. All right, so before installing the, uh, the new pads, it always best to do a little bit of maintenance on the pistons uh, itself before putting in the new pad. So what I do is using some sort of a brake pad spreader I would lodge that in between like so and pull on the brake levers just enough to get those pistons coming out like that. Just enough, you've got a little bit of exposure right there. All right, now using the silicon oil and a cotton swab, I would dab, or sorry, clean the pistons out of some dirt and debris. So, and at the same time, the silicon is lubricating the walls of the piston. So do that on the other side. Try to push in the other side and let the other side of the piston expose itself further. Right. And some more silicon oil. Just wipe it up onto the walls of the piston. Be careful not to uh, push the pistons out further or else it's going to come out on you and it's going to be a pain to put back and bleed. So just be sure to expose it just enough to clean the walls of the piston. So ideally, you would want to do this twice, three times if you're uh, not lazy. <laughs> I mean, I just do this twice. So, let's use a flat head screwdriver on this one. Be careful not to uh, damage the pistons because they're just made of some plastic material. It's just really easy to nick some of the plastic material off. All right, so just press in the pistons all the way in. This is what they call exercising the pistons when you press it all the way in and you'll pump it up again to uh, expose those pistons out to repeat the process that I just did earlier. But, uh, right now only one piston is coming out. Alright, so with the help of a flat head screwdriver, try to stop the ones that are coming out so that the other side can come out as well. There you go. All right. so once you've got them all exposed, on, just try to ram this in between. All right. So we've got all the walls exposed again, and 
using a clean cotton swab again. Try to repeat the uh, silicone brushing on the walls just so that we're sure to drench that seals with some of the lubricants. Because over time, some of the dirt and grime gets in those crevices. That's the reason, probably the reason why the pads were wore down uh, like that. One side over the others thicker than the other one. So be sure to always lubricate your pistons when installing new brake pads or not when installing new brake pads but ideally do it regularly. Alright that should do it. And now just push those pistons all the way in. Be sure to align them perfectly. Don't try to force it because sometimes those pistons are at an angle. There we go. And it's just easy to crack them if you use a lot of force pressing them in. There we go. Now using a small paper towel, be sure to clean up all the excess oil. You don't want those on your pads, contaminating your pads, or on your rotor disc. So be sure to wipe out any excess oil from your calipers. All right, so onto the flushing stage. I'm gonna be using a simple bleed kit that has these, uh, this uh, bleed bottle wherein you can just dump all the uh, old fluid in and not worry about spilling it. So it's got this small tank, a hose, a lock for the hose, and simple hanger. do is and insert this wrench here first then the hose then lock it in place with this and now just hang this over here and using this piston stop could prevent it or it acts sort of like there's a pad inside I'm gonna lock it with this all right so using a t10 torch wrench remove the reservoir cap from the master cylinder so we could inspect the condition of the uh, old brake fluid. Put this aside. that diaphragm there that covers fluid. 
there you go. That's the reason why you should be flushing out your old brake fluids regularly. cases like this it's best to siphon out the old fluid first before pouring in the fresh one so just using a syringe just make sure to get all those old and dirty fluid out before mixing the fresh batch in and be sure to dispose of it properly. I'm gonna be dumping it in this waste can, waste bottle on it. All right, that's the dot 5.1 brake fluid. So once the uh, reservoir is topped up, you can go ahead and pump up the lever and hold it in place and open up the bleed valve. Then close it up again, repeat pumping the lever, hold it while you're squeezing it and open up again. Close, do it again. Make sure to always top up the reservoir when doing this. Otherwise, air will come into the hose and mess up your bleeding process. So just keep repeating until all that dirty fluid is replaced with a fresh one. Topping up the reservoir so as not to permit any air into the system while bleeding the brakes. So now we're starting to see clear brake fluid coming out of the system, which means fresh fluid has already flushed out the old gunky one. So just keep repeating until you get fresh fluid coming out of this hose. So just keep flushing off all the old fluid out of the system. Tighten up the bleed valve, disconnect the bleed hose. And be sure to dispose of the old brake fluid properly. To finish it off, just top up the reservoir tank to the brim. 
before replacing the cap. Putting the cap back on. Be sure to have a paper towel handy. So there's going to be a bit of spillage putting on the, uh, the cap back. One side first. And just roll it over to prevent air bubbles from entering the tank. Screw it back on. It's not good. back on because we're going to need to align the caliper body with the rotor disc. Alright, now using your 5 mil hex loosen up the bolts holding the caliper body. Just enough so you can move the caliper around. Because we need to centralize the caliper. Ideally you want this centered relative to the rotor disc, like so. Ideally, just enough, just balance it out. Like so. And that looks, looks centered to me. All right, so while you're here, it's also best to inspect your rotor disc for wobbles. In my case there was, but I was already able to uh, align it using this. So just try to take try to take something like in my case I use this and try to stick it like that just enough that it sticks to the disc. Then try to move it around. Check for any unevenness on the disc. And if you see one, just use something like this to uh, to align any of the this unevenness on the discs. So in my case, I've already done that, and it's just as straight as I could probably get it. All right, now installing the new pads it comes with this spring right here. It helps in and helps in. Uh, spreading the pads when not in use so that it's not always in contact with a disc. So we just put that right there and put the other one on top. Now when handling the new brake pads, be sure that there's no oil or anything on your gloves that might contaminate the pads. So in this case I'm using fresh gloves right here so I'm sure there's no oil in them and then just insert, insert it on the new 
on your newly cleaned and maintained caliper. And grab the new bolt that comes with the kit. Right here. Tighten it up and of course the new safety clip right there. Alright, there you go. Alright, easy as that. Guys, I've got it. Can you don't line, so it's probably rubbing on the other side. So what you do with this is just grab a flat head screw and just force one of the sides like so. Just so you have even spacing. In between. Alright, All right, so quick tip for getting those uh, almost perfect uh, pad to rotor clearance when adjusting your brakes. What I do is I try to cut out a piece of paper like this. Just some long strands of paper like that and when before uh, tightening the uh, caliper bolts I would put this in between the rotor and the brake pads like so and then squeeze the brake levers and Almost every time I get that freewheeling uh, rotor to pad clearance that we're always looking for. 